against Brayden Elfert. It's gonna be Charizard EX versus Espathra EX. Espathra indeed, Chip, with that bog-type turret type that we were talking about earlier that we weren't sure if there had been a bog-type. Espathra is here with a Dazzling Glaze ability, asking your opponent to pay more to attack and then with the grass type, a big advantage potentially against Charizard EX Dex. Of course, Pedro, one of the top young players in the game. He was seeing a lot of success in the last couple of seasons. He did not attend EUIC, but he is here in Orlando, sitting at 5-1-1, one, one, looking to get one more win to lock up a spot in day number two. He works, of course, very closely with William Azevedo, and looking at these prize cards being laid out, a couple key things right away already for Pedro. That yeah. Radiant Charizard and also that Heat Tackle Charmander, that's actually a really important attacker in this matchup. Yeah, Heat Tackle, very crucial as it does hit his path for four weakness. However, Pedro does play four of those, so I think he'll be okay oh, yeah. no in that here. regard. Okay. Yeah, no split, just like for Dracliff, right? But that Radiant Charizard, as you mentioned, that's the best attacker that Pedro has to deal with that grass Grass type fire weak as Pathra EX. However, it's not going to be accessible in the beginning. And Charizard EX's damage output might not quite get him there, especially because he ended up switching from Maximum Belt to Prime Catcher yeah. as the A spec of choice. And Brayden here is going to be looking for a little bit of redemption. He played this deck to EYC. He's actually playing the same 60, I believe, between this tournament and the last. And he went 6 1 and 1 at the event versus Charizard EX. The one game he lost the one on was the game that he was on stream. And he felt like there were some mistakes he made in that one. He definitely wanted a little bit of that uh, opportunity back. And we're giving it to him here. We'll see what he can do up against one of the game's top players, Pedro Pertusi. Now he is starting things off over on the left side of the table with that Rotom V in the active spot. One of the issues for Charizard in this new format with Battle VIP Pass rotating, you have a little bit harder time getting Rotom V into play. So why not just start it, have access to that instant charge right away, and then following it up with a Buddy Buddy Poffin, able to grab two Pokemon with 70 HP or less, putting them directly onto the bench. This is a pretty good start from Pedro. Very powerful start indeed. And now you're sitting in Pedro's seat and you see a shop it. I don't know how much like you study the results beyond top eight, top sixteen of EUIC. Braden did go on stream, did play against William specifically, so I'm sure Pedro is aware that that shop it doesn't necessarily signify that he's up against Kiratina with Banet, but rather that he's probably up against his Pathra EX this time around. Now I mentioned the Heat Tackle Charmander earlier, and the reason I'm bringing it up is not because it. I mean, it does hit Espathra for weakness. You still need two energy on it to attack. <laughs> so it's not super great into Espathra EX, but it deals 30 damage. And you know what has 30 HP? Flittle, the pre-evolution of Espathra, only 30 hit points. So I actually watched uh, Rowan Stavano out in the field earlier on in the day. He was playing up against a player playing Espathra. Rowan is playing Charizard. And that was Rowan's main attacker the entire game, pretty much all the way until he needed to take his last three to four prizes was just using the Charmander, hitting for 30 damage into Flittle. Yeah, I mean, if that's your win condition, then that's how you want to go about it, right? Now, we do see Brayden off to a pretty decent start, discarding Banette, discarding Espathra, but I believe does play two copies of Supra to get those back. So off the races here for Brayden, as we see that 30 HP Flittle hit the board. And it's an interesting deck building call, right? There are 40 HP Flittle in the format, I believe. I'm pretty sure there is. But this Flittle has 30 HP, right? And uh, it, you would look at this and be like, why would you ever play the one that has less HP? It gets KO'd to a relevant Pokemon like this Charmander, but it's because it has that free retreat. Opening it up gives you a nice little pivot into something else. You have plenty of options. Maybe you can move into something like the Fluttermane or the Cleffa, both cards that Brayden plays so that you can utilize either of those, either the Fluttermane to slow your opponent down or the Cleffa to draw yourself some cards. Now we are seeing an army of Flittles hit the board and as you mentioned, uh, having that free retreat is so, so crucial. I think especially towards Cleffa. Cleffa is such a fantastic addition to decks that lost the resource of Battle VIP Pass in order to set up something like Rotom or some other uh, potential support Pokemon. Cleffa is that fantastic support Pokemon that is actually searchable by the Puffin. 
Now, Braden here may be just going for this Shuppet uh, as the attacker here, enveloping Shadow as its attack, 10 damage, and then you flip a coin. If heads, your opponent can't play any item cards, and that's exactly what we're going to see. Ooh. It does become a Tails here. Braden, you got to flip that coin a little bit better <laughs> there, buddy. It is going to be a Tails, and Pedro is not going to be inhibited by anything at all this turn. Now, Pedro's start was a little bit underwhelming in terms of the actions that he did on turn one. Does have an Arvin, but I'm not sure he has like a powerful rare candy Charizard attack. And hitting 30, as you mentioned, like the heat tackle is pretty important against those flittles, but that means you also need boss's orders or yeah. your prime catcher, and finding those consistently is not necessarily easy. I actually think did Pedro draw the prime catcher for turn <laughs> this turn I think he may have it yeah he's yeah, got he it does. in his hand yeah. so it's an option if he wants to go for it now prime catcher extremely valuable card you only get to play one a spec in your deck is this the time that has got to be the big question Pedro is wondering and I always I honestly kind of think it is I think you want to put on the pressure here yeah I would say advancing your win condition taking that price card very very important and also the Charmander means Brayden needs to respond to the Charmander, right? And Brayden will establish that this path route, take prizes, and the more prizes your opponent takes, the more powerful the Charizard EX get. And especially because the Radiant Charizard is prized, Pedro really wants to prioritize freeing that up from the prize cards. Will be Rare Candy into the Pidgeot, that powerful quick search ability, finding Pedro any one card from his deck that he could want right now. He's thinking through the options, Debated a Charizard EX is actually going to think better of it for the Rare Candy. Already has the Charizard EX in his hand. And it looks like we will see him go on the aggressive, utilizing Charizard here. Yeah, instead of choosing to go in with a Charmander, could still use the other two Charmanders that are here to take down any of these Flittles that are over here. Sure. But, yeah, that Charizard EX into play could also be ghosted by an Espathra. And especially now that two energies have been attached, to that Charizard EX. That is a really big deal because it does allow Brayden to potentially reach for a KO in a much easier manner. And Pedro is also loading an energy onto the Pidgeot, perhaps wanting to utilize that as an attacking option. We actually, he's thinking about it, is going to be Prime <laughs> Catcher, wants to make sure this Rigid Band is not going to stop him, and it will not. It only does something whenever the Pokemon it's attached to is a Stage 1 Pokemon. Flittle has not had an opportunity to evolve, so Prime Catcher brings that low HP Pokemon to the active spot, and Heat Tackle taking the KO on the Flittle. We don't see Heat Tackle KOs too often these days. <laughs> Did see a lot of Heat Tackles at the top tables and at the in top card of EUIC, right? Or did use that quite yeah, a bit, true, even with true. a Vitality Band to deal extra damage and apply a lot of pressure as we see the Shatu finally come into play. This Pokemon that I think has a lot of potential, but hasn't been seen at all at least until this point. It's got an incredibly powerful ability with its acceleration, its draw power, clairvoyant sense, getting you extra energy cards into play and also helping you to consistently set your deck up. Yeah, having both energy attachment and draw power in the same card is so, so powerful. But sometimes that uh, little HP or low HP of Natu as well as the evolution requirement, or quite simply, maybe there just isn't the right powerful enough card to justify establishing that Shadow. But we're going to see the Clefa here. Are we going to see a an attack from it? I think we may potentially. Uh, I don't know that Brayden wants to throw up an Espathra when facing down just a Charmander. And he draws seven cards here off this Professor's Research, but I think he didn't draw into any energies. Not a single energy found, as you mentioned, so... Yeah, this might be a time to use Clefa, but it also means Brayden's going to probably fall fall behind two prizes as Clefa does have that very frail 30 HP that is in range of Heat Tackle. Yeah, it is a little bit risky. Maybe you actually even go for the Shuppet at this position. Just utilize that. Try to slow Pedro down. You know yeah. the Shuppet's not going to give up a prize card. Give yourself another turn to potentially establish... And now, while Brayden did not draw into any energy cards, he did draw into energy retrieval, allowing him to bring an energy card back from the discard pile into his hand. Drawing two now with Clairvoyant Sense. Doesn't find an energy still, however. No energy found, but 
has just enough to be able to take down the Charmander. As we see, a hero caped little. Now it has 130 <laughs> HP chip. It's trying much to KO this now. one, Pedro. <laughs> You know, Pedro could KO it. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> There's a Charizard that could definitely <laughs> take that down. But this Spathory X is going to be a tough um, obstacle for Pedro to deal with at this point. Yeah, it's got a lot of HP. It's weak to fire. And while it might seem counterintuitive, Charizard is not a fire type. It is a dark type with that Terra Dark attribute being attributed to it. Now, the things that make Espathra annoying uh, include its powerful ability, Dazzling Gaze. As long as it's active, attacks used by your opponent's active Pokemon cost a colorless energy more. So if Pedro even wants to attack this Pokemon, he's going to need quite a bit here. Yeah, the Charizard decks play a bare minimum of six energy and having to dedicate half of them to a single Charizard to attack and not even KO yeah. is not ideal. And it also synergizes perfectly with its own attack. You force your opponent to require more energies to attack, therefore powering yourself up for that cyborg attack, doing extra damage for each energy your opponent has and yourself. So I expect Pedro, as opposed to swinging into this Espathra, which doesn't seem like a very good play, uh, to see him try to get around it through potentially boss's orders. And using Quick Search right away, it was that boss's orders Lysander brought to the front of the deck immediately. Now, as Brayden, a question you could ask is what is best to KO? You could take another Heat Tackle KO on the Cleffa. You could potentially take your opponent's Zatu draw power out of play. You could even target down the Flittle with the Hero's Cape. Get rid of that before it becomes an Espathra EX. And that's what Brayden's going to choose to do. Yep, I think that's the correct call for Pedro here to take down this Flittle. I think Brayden has been attaching those tools a little too preemptively. But, I mean, preventing the simple Charmander KO is fine. But now Brayden needs to find how many energies is it chip? Two more, I believe, to be able to take down the Charizard EX. Might be three more? Yeah, it is two more, actually. Two more. So really not something that should be too difficult to achieve. You just need to attach one from your hand and then find one more to attach with the Clairvoyant Sense. If Brayden can do that, he'll be able to take two prizes on this Charizard EX and leave Pedro trying to find the correct answer. Has struggled to find energy so far though. Really rooting for a Tails here to establish another Flittle, which once again can be a liability, does only have 30 HP, but gotta set him up at him, some point. Yeah, and there's no more Charmander threat. Now that Charmander evolved into Charmeleon, it's actually less threatening, ironically. Yeah, <laughs> a little <laughs> ironic to see for sure. Brayden has the Ultra Ball in his hand. He can actually go grab the Puppet Offering Banette out of his deck if he would like. Yeah. Pretty strong tech card that we saw from uh, Isaiah. Isaiah Bradner in the finals of EUIC in his Giratina deck. It's making its way into this Espathra as well. Just a consistent way to get supporter cards back. If you're already playing Banette EX as a way to maybe slow down opposing Chiam Pao decks, other Stage 2 or other Evolution decks, Seems pretty nice to just add this in as a tech option. Now, choosing to Iono instead of using that puppet offering to establish a research, and when you need two energies, I feel like I would have liked to see that research, but does think, find the two energies. Yeah, so. I, I think he, he has a pretty decent shot here to have found what he needs. I mean, like you said, he hasn't found many energies yet, so that means there's got to be some in the deck, right? Uh, he plays 11, it's a pretty high count, and he knows if he at least draws one, he can draw a couple more potentially with the Clairvoyance Sense. So I think it was a fine thing to go for here. You need more than just finding energy cards. You need to also try to slow Pedro down. If you continue to leave the Charizard deck with tons of cards in hand, it makes their quick search decisions much easier because they just have more options. And that's a big part of this matchup for Brayden. It's not only as Pather being able to one-hit KO Charizard EX, it's the ability to try to slow them down and force them to find many ways to deal with as Pathra, which they really don't have that many. We are about to see a Pokemon League headquarters or not. Uh, see play that stadium definitely helps to protect against Radiant Charizard, which attacks for less uh, for each prize card your opponent has taken. But between Espathra's ability and the stadium, attacking with Radiant Charizard is becoming increasingly difficult, let alone the fact that it's still prized. So for Pedro here, four prize cards remaining. We'd see him utilizing the quick search. What would you like to see him go for as far as a prize map from this point? You know, he's got to take four more prizes to win the game. 
assume maybe you're going to have to KO the 1S Pathra EX somewhere down the line. Where do those other two prizes come in, Pablo? I mean, it's got to be an extra S Pathra, right? It's the only thing that Braden can actually pressure with. And now that Braden has taken three prize cards, the S Pathra EX is in range of a Charizard EX knockout. But as you mentioned, with Iono Disruption, setting up back-to-back -back Charizards could be very difficult for Pedro, especially if he had not been able to find a Super to replenish his deck of energies at this point. Yeah, I would, if Pedro can do it, I wouldn't hate to see him use this Pidgeot to KO Azatu, or maybe even the Binet on the bench, something like that. Take the one prize there, and then maybe try to work in the Charmander later on to heat tackle the Cleffa that's sitting on the bench, and then only have to get through one S-Pathra to close out the game. If you throw a Charizard at this active as Pathra, I, I would be a little worried that your opponent is just going to find a way to clear that out of play, and then you're going to have to make another Charizard next turn. Yep, indeed, maybe Pedro uh, sort of taking a risk at assuming that he's going to be able to find the Radiant Charizard off of this final two sure. prize cards and allow him to do that. But even if Brayden is at one prize card, because of his Pathros ability, Pedro would still need to take to attach to energies, I believe. Yes, well, it's if Brayden is at two, two prizes, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, then, then Pedro five, would then, still need to. Yeah, if, he if, would be able to bypass the ability, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's a very odd <laughs> interaction yeah. uh, between the Radiant Charizard's ability and also Espatra's Dazzling Glaze. Now, Pedro is going in with the Charizard here. He actually has the Mist Energy in his hand. That is a, a tech that we see from Charizard every once in a while here in this still young format. And now Palpad being played, shuffling two supporter cards back from the discard pile into the deck. It looks like it will just be a couple of Arvin here, the best options for Pedro to potentially find off of an incoming disruption supporter from Brayden. Indeed, if Brayden's going to be down to one prize card after this turn, and Pedro determines that he needs to attack with Rain Charizard, if he finds it off the prize cards, then that Arvin gets you Ultra Ball or Nest Ball to be able to find that Radiant Charizard that would be potentially at the bottom of your deck. Now, if Pedro could do it, I, I think it would be good to bench a Charmander here so you at least have the option to make a big Charizard, right? Yep. He has not used his Forest Seal Stone yet. Is he maybe thinking of holding off, not utilizing it so that he has access to it off of an incoming Iono? Looks like that's his call. Yeah, putting all the eggs in the Radiant Charizard basket right here, and it seems like it's going to pay off. It is available, and then you essentially have double quick search for next turn with the Forest Seal Stone and the Pidgeot. That's really, really powerful, and I think that might uh, allow Pedro to find every piece he needs to close out this game. There's no other attacker that Brayden can use in this situation other than the Espathra EX. Yeah, I think this is going to work out for Pedro because he took the Radiant Charizard. It, like you said, though, it was a bit of a risk. What if Pedro doesn't take the Radiant Charizard off the prizes? If this Charizard goes down, he really doesn't have any options available. Yeah, the, your Charizard deck without Charmanders, it's just not going to work, right? And Pidgeot could go boss KO a shot to, right? It's probably not in range of his path route, so maybe you have that possibility. Just close out the two uh, Pokemon on the bench, as you were mentioning, which are impossible for Brayden to get off the board. Braden thinning the deck here, finding the Flutter Main, a solid tech when you expect to play against something like Giratina. Not going to be super strong right now. Clairvoyant Sense, attaching an energy, drawing two cards, another energy found, another Zatu able to be utilized here. Clairvoyant Sense, potentially used once again. No, just attach from hand for turn. The Pokemon League HQ may make things a little difficult for, Braid, uh, for Pedro nope. on the next turn. And the Iono being played, sending both players' hands to the bottom of the deck. Pedro just drawing two. Brayden with just three. What does Pedro need to close this game out? It's a three-card combo, right? He needs the energy, he needs the Radiant Charizard, and he needs a stadium. And the V-Star and Pidgeot can get him two out of those three. But the question is, can he find he that He has to draw one, one of the other ones, yep. Also, I wonder how many energy does he even have left in the deck? That's another piece sure of this puzzle. One. He does still have one. Yep, Arvin will allow him to get one of the pieces. And assuming he has, yep, I see the Lost Vacuum. I do believe he has just the right amount of cards to be able to piece this out. Nest Ball for Radiant Charizard. Quick Search for the Lost Vacuum. 
and four seal stone for the energy, or however you want to go about it, but it, I do think he has access to those three pieces. Yeah, and I think we may see the players just clarify the interaction yeah. here. <laughs> Excited Heart does cost, uh, does mean that Combustion Mask can be used for just one fire energy at this point. Yeah. Even though Braden's Espathra is increasing the attack cost of Combustion Blast by one, with five prizes taken, it can be used for just one energy. Indeed. I do believe that is correct. I think they're uh, clarifying that as yeah. we see. The yeah. League HQ is just the last piece of the puzzle, right? You have to get rid of the League HQ. Because as of right now, Radiant Charizard's attack costs a fire Seven. and a colorless energy. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Fire and a colorless energy. Because that ability, Excited Heart is active. We're just making sure we understand the situation. Yeah. Pedro does have everything. There's the Lost Vacuum in the deck. There's the energy card. Yep. And here we go. And this is where playing that Palpat to recover those two Arvin was so, so key. Yeah, usually you see players recover boss's orders, yeah. or, but Pedro perfectly understanding exactly what he's going to need. Maybe uh, not suspecting about the Pokemon League headquarters, but in the end, it ends up working out and uh, in case Brayden played a Lost Vacuum to remove that first stone, that also helped, uh, or that was another argument to put back the Arvins, but it ended up working out really well for him to find the three-card combo that he needed to close out the game. We saw Charmander putting in the work, taking that first KO on a flittle to kick off the game. Brayden was able to respond with his Espathra EX. Pedro went in with a Charizard. Brayden found the KO, but perhaps was a little too aggressive with the placement of his hero's cape in this game. Indeed, I think that was very key. Along with the rigid bands, he was never able to prevent Charizard, right? Or even, like, induce Pedro to play the, the Lost Vacuum, vacuum. That's one less piece, and therefore right? would have struggled, right? Uh, I do believe Pedro does have a stadium somewhere. Oh, oh. maybe he doesn't play a stadium. Yeah. So Lost Vacuum is the only out that he has to counteract those tools. Maybe that's something Braden can use in this next game if he's a little more cautious with his tool placement. Yeah, that's something I'd love to see from Braden as an adjustment. I think the rigid band came down because he was playing research, yeah. right? So it like has to come down anyway, otherwise you just discard it. A little unfortunate that that was found in the opening hand. But yeah, the hero's cape on the flittle. He wanted to protect it, I guess, from the, the heat the tackle, heat which tackle, yeah. can make sense. You know, if he doesn't put that hero's cape there, then flittle just goes down to the heat tackle pretty easily. But then you have an Espathra still, and you can still boost it up to 360 hit, hit points. Ooh, double shadow in the prizes for Brayden. The super odd prize for Pedro is also very impactful at this point yeah. as uh, the energy demand is higher because of Espathra's ability. So very key cards prized for both players, especially that energy acceleration could mean Brayden whiffs a knockout at some key moment. As we're getting into this game, Brayden did lose game one, so he got to choose to go first or second. And he's chosen to go second here. Why do you think that is, Pablo, based on what his deck is or what this matchup entails? I think in general, Charizard decks are just so powerful going second when they have not only the four Body Body Puffin, but the four Arvin to be able to search for those Body Body Puffins, essentially having access to eight searching cards. However, if you let them go first, they might have an underwhelming start, which allows you to start off with a powerful advantage. Pedro did start that Rotom two games in a row. Not yeah. too bad. You won't complain about that. Braden may be wishing he could have started his Flutter main in this position. Uh, would have slowed Pedro down just a little bit. But right away, Pedro Ultra Balls will get a Pokemon into play. But one of the cards he chose to discard was a Fire Energy. Normally an okay thing to discard when you have access to two Super Odd. But in this matchup, you mentioned, Pablo, how important those super odds are because you're more energy uh, intensive. You, you, know, you require more energy to attack than maybe you normally otherwise would. So could that energy being discarded here early play a factor? Yeah, it generally could play a big role. I'm sure Pedro is now aware with how thorough he is with his price checking that the other, that one super odd is priced. So he's going to be extra, extra careful with his energy as we see the energy attachment on the Pidgey, which Pidgey is a pretty good attacker. It's not weak to grass, and it can take down most of the Pokemon that Brayden plays. Yeah, and what do you think of this call as well from Pedro? Ultra Ball can only get one Pokemon in play. He has to choose between Pidgey or Charmander. He ended up landing on Pidgey. Why is that? 
Well, you have the threat of Heat Tackle, right? Heat Tackle is so, so good against those 30 HP Flittles. Therefore, you're in no rush to put a Grass Week Charge RDX into play. Brayden has an excellent start with a pair of Buddy Buddy Poffin putting four Pokemon into play right off the bat. It will be two, not two, and two Flittle ready to go, ready to hopefully evolve up into those powerful Psychic Pokemon. Now, we know Brayden has prized two Zatu, and that is really bad really with just any matchup with this deck, but especially in this de uh, matchup, because you want to be utilizing as many Zatus as possible here. You want to get all those extra energies on to your Espatra EX so you can reach for those one-hit KOs on the Grass Weak Charizard EX. It'll be a lot more difficult for Brayden to reach for those big numbers. Indeed, very, very crucial as Brayden did find the shadow and a big, big flip for this shop. Another and Tails. Once again, no item denial for Pedro. So big, big deal here. I wonder if maybe that's a potential reason to choose to go set, uh, to choose to go first so that you actually have the possibility to deny your opponent's item card. With Bennett, yeah, potentially. Yeah. So I wonder how good Bennett is in this matchup, though, right? It is weak to dark, it is right? Weak to dark. And your opponent can eventually still get there, but yeah, denying rare candy Pidgeot is super good. But, you know, with introduction of Scarlet and Violet, there was, of course, that meta rule change where tool cards are no longer items, so it would still mean Pedro could utilize Arvin, which we see him playing now, to maybe get the Forest Seal Stone, still potentially build up to a Charizard EX. Yep, through the one-off copy of Charmeleon, right? So perhaps that's a little, or that's not the ideal path, and Braden valuing the, the possibility of Pedro just drawing underwhelmingly, as opposed to trying to cheese that little bit of uh, no items in there. Now, Pedro actually has an excellent hand here. He utilized the Arvin, and now he has found Ultra Ball and Forest Seal Stone. This Ultra Ball will go get the Pidgeot EX, and he's already got a rare candy in hand. He's already got Prime Catcher. I think the only thing he's missing is potentially the energy card to be able to attack. And now, actually, he even has that. So off of this quick search, off of the potential use of Forest Seal Stone, he'll have plenty of options to just set up his board. He's already got an attack lined up. Yeah, that heat tackle once again will take down one of these poor, poor Flittles. However, I think a big thing uh, that happened in the previous matchup was that Pedro took two prizes before Brayden was able to take a single one. Yes. And I think Brayden's hand uh, includes a supporter right now. So if Brayden is just able to respond and keep up, that's going to be a big difference from the previous game. Yeah, we'll see if Brayden can respond to the potential aggression. And Pedro here is actually gonna go in with the Pidgeot EX, dealing 120 damage and actually targeting down not to, as opposed to Flittle. A little bit of a pivot of strategy. What do we think of this? I like it. Uh, of course, Espathra is a threat, but Shatu makes Espathra oh. a threat. Brayden does not have a very good hand. He has no supporter. I think he's living on this capturing aroma and needs to get ahead yes, there it is. to be able to go find the Bennett. And that's, I think, what Brayden was really needing here. Yeah. Needs to find the puppet offering to get back the Iono. Otherwise, his hand was completely unable to do anything. I think he might have had an Ultra Ball to search for the same Bennett. I don't think so. No? Okay. I, I could be then mistaken, yeah. but I, I really it don't think so. I think he needed this capturing aroma potentially. Ooh, um, oh, came. I could be wrong. Let's see. It's the Buddy Poffin and another capturing aroma. Oh, another. Oh, yeah. Was the, it was the Bennett prized and we missed Bennett that? Prized? I think I noticed it when he searched through his deck. He also does have the option of Cleffa if he wants to at least go for that. Yeah, seems like that's going to be the choice. I guess valuing evolving both Flittles and that way sure. that was another issue that Braden had like they were getting picked apart but getting double um, double his path right into play could be very powerful here but is it a little too late though and we are going to see the double his path and we will see the Cleffa drawing up to seven cards kind of the new technology in the format <laughs> battle VIP pass has rotated Rotom is old news it's all about Cleffa these days and Brayden here uses boss's orders, not to be aggressive and take a knockout, but more than anything, to be annoying. Because Pedro does not play Switch in his deck. Most Charizard decks do not right now in the format. They only have Prime Catcher as an option, which Pedro has just utilized. This is forcing Pedro to attach and utilize another energy just to retreat. That's an energy that he's not able to use to attack. This is Brayden trying to drain Pedro of all of his resources. 
Yeah, and Pidgeot is good, but it's not as good as being able to find an energy to retreat and a boss to take down Brayden's only Shatu into play. Therefore, that's going to be, uh, that's going to give Brayden a little bit of breathing room. Uh, if the Shatu was going down this turn, then he would probably be a little too far behind to do much. However, Pedro can only search for one of those cards. Might, not, might even just go for a... Uh, for a candy Charizard here with only one Shatu, there's no way for Spathra to get enough energies to one KO a Charizard EX in a single turn. We are seeing Infernal Rain throwing tons of energy cards into play, a pair on Charizard EX, and then also that Rotom to be able to retreat it, and also Forest Sealstone not used on the last turn, yeah. able to be used now. Star Alchemy finding any one card here for Pedro. Yeah, I completely forgot that the V-Star from Rotom was still available. Therefore, we will be able to see a boss on that Shatu where Brayden's going to be I able to barely do any damage to this yeah. Pidgeot. Only 120, I believe. They've been setting a solid two-hit KO. And then that Charizard EX can possibly take over the game. Or two-hit KO is Pathra as it is getting two-hit KO'd itself, which is not a big deal for it. The issue is if it gets one hit KO'd and it can't KO back. And this is a great play from Pedro, regardless of the fact that Brayden has prized to Zatu, because there was no Natu in play. So Brayden, uh, Pedro knows for a fact no Zatu can come into play this turn, regardless of what any potential prizes look like. And we actually will see the Banet come into play. A normal huge liability, I think, in this matchup. A very strong option. Honestly, a card that I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen see more use in play in the Pokemon TCG because it really has so many options. It's just naturally such a strong card, uh, but it is weak to dark, which with that Charizard in the wings waiting is pretty risky. Yeah, I don't know what denying items is going to do here or... Wait! The Super Odds yes. not available. Are there no energies How left many to energies are in the discard Rotom? pile? That is going to be the big question. How many energies are in the discard pile right now? And with the Radiant Alakazam coming into play as well. Yeah. It's going to be a while, but that Rotom is going to be stuck in the active for a very long time, yeah. Chip. Giving Brayden more time to build up energy, builds uh, options up so that maybe he can piece together another boss's orders. Go after Charizard with his Espathra. I think there might still be one fire left in the deck. I'm not exactly sure. We're about to find out here. Quick Hopefully search being angle. used. Yes. There is, there is an energy, so good plan, good idea. I mean, right? Pedro has four prizes left. If yeah. the energy is in the prize cards, this is going, would normally work for Brayden. And Brayden found his back against the wall here. I, I think, it, we even hear him saying, yeah. I had to try, right? He knew that he was in a bad spot. It was really his one chance to get back in this game. If that fire energy is prized, Brayden can buy a ton of turns, 19 turns, really, because he's effectively doing 10 damage to this Rotom every turn with Radiant Alakazam moving two off. Indeed, and that would be a long time for the Rotom to get KO'd, but unfortunately he did have that last energy available. I do believe he just unlocked the other Super Art as well, so Pedro in a very commanding lead against what is supposed to be a potential bad matchup. Braden will just play the Capturing Aroma. Able to get a Pokemon out of the deck. It will be a Natu trying to get a Zatu into play. And we'll see if he can finally establish one. We know the, the one that he has access to is in the discard pile, so he'll also have to find a Super Rod at some point <laughs> along the way here. Now, could Braden? is there any possibility? I guess not anymore with the Natu hit, hitting the board, but... Was there ever an opportunity where you tried that play once again? The thing is, Rotom would eventually go down, right? And there right. isn't something well, else that you could technically trap. So yeah, and it buys you turns, but not the whole game. And then now with no item lock, right? With no yeah. item lock being utilized, your opponent would have access to the Super Odd. I was a little worried there we were going to see Braden try to use Grasping Draw with Cleffa with the Pokemon <laughs> League HQ in play. <laughs> it does technically cost one, but Braden, a seasoned Espathra player, recognizes that he cannot draw that extra card. Uh, he did have six in his hand in the turn, but knows, yeah, just got a pass. Now we're over to Pedro's side of the field. Indeed, Pedro about to be one prize away, one boss's orders away, does have the Palpet as well. 
to just recycle those. We'll go grab that Supra to replenish energy, make sure retreating is no longer an issue for him. And I think the writing is on the wall, Chip. Yeah. I can't see a way Braden turns this 2-6 two -two deficit around. Yeah, you know, we've got Indianapolis, we've got LA Regionals. Maybe Braden will get on the stream at one of those and he can finally get a win against Charizard. a Charizard <laughs> as his Espather deck. It's not happening today, though, buddy. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately for Braden. Now, obviously, being grass type gives you an edge, a natural edge against Charizard, right? But we, are, we have seen Braden go up against Willem Acevedo and now Pedro Bertuzzi, two of the best yes. Latin American players yes. in the world. And, I mean,. Can his Pathra catch some Charizard players off guard, but at the very top level where the margins are so, so small, is it good enough to actually defeat Charizard? Well, you know, we find ourselves actually in kind of an interesting spot here. I, I think it is actually technically possible for Braden to potentially do something here if he can get Zatu and if he can Iono Pedro to one. I don't think off of one card, even with Quick Search, there's a way that Pedro can... Well, I guess it depends on if he has a boss's orders left. But he's already utilized boss. I didn't notice if he used Palpat or not. I think he may be down his two boss already. That is the thing that's going to come down to the wire here. Uh, but if Braden can Iono plus find Super Ride, get back a Zatu, and then establish a Zatu on the Natu, get one more energy onto the Sespathra, he could knock out the Charizard. That's, that's what he's got to play for here. Right. And he gets a knock on the Charizard, but then Pidgeot, even if he takes you two turns, turn one, call pad back the boss, turn two, yes. quick search for the for boss, boss, and there's yeah. always well, that Well, you know, maybe, maybe you build up enough energy on the Espathor to KO the Pidgeot, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe yeah. that is true. Hey, we got to play to our outs here. Braden found the Ultra Ball, but was unable to find the Super Rod and found no energy as well. <laughs> I think Braden just said, I'm going to attack you to make it look cool. <laughs> has no <laughs> idea how much damage this is even doing. Normally, he's one hit KOing Charizards. He <laughs> does the sound effect of whatever, <laughs> of the Cybol attack. There we go. <laughs> all, yeah. all Pedro needs now is a boss's orders, and that will close out the game. And sure enough, there it is. Boss up. A not to a Flittle, a Radiant Alakazam. Doesn't really Anything matter. Wants. Yep. 2 0 victory for Pedro Pertusi. <laughs> Duo victory, locking his spot into day two in the biggest regional in history. And I'd really like to emphasize how this keeps happening, Chip. We keep getting the biggest regional. How many times have I said that this season?